Hi everyone, it's Terry from the Gypsy Magpie, and I'm here for Graphics Fairy Tag Team Friday with a Queen Bee tag that I made. I had so much fun with the colors and the bee. I really enjoyed putting this together. Um, it's done with multiple layers. Let me turn it so you can kind of see. So there's some dimension to it. And on this, I love this fat little bee. I use an enamel number on here. It's a number charm. And she's actually got a little crown because she's the queen. Tied some pretty ribbon up on the top. And that's it. It's backed with some, just some book print. I always, always cover the back of all of my projects. Um, I do a lot of banners and a lot of tags and quite often they hang, um, especially the banners, they hang across mirrors in my house. And when you don't finish the back, um, I at least, I notice the, un the, the raw on the back and I don't like that. So I make sure I always use, almost always book print or sheet music. I always have something on the back of my project. You certainly don't have to do it, but it's a nice finishing touch, um, especially if you're tying this tag onto something, um, maybe that's a gift for someone else. It's always nice if the back is finished. So enough about the back of the project. Let's concentrate on the front of the project. So. I love these chipboard tags that you get at the craft store. In years past, I, gosh, I have done tags for probably 20 years and I was always a fan of the large manila shipping tags. Um, that is what I used for all of those years. And about six months ago, I discovered these chipboard tags and I'm totally hooked. I love the stability it gives the tag. If you can't find them, but you wanted a chipboard tag, you can certainly make it. Um, I've actually done that when I have run out of a package and I have more to do. You cut them into the rectangle. If you have a heavy duty corner rounder, that's all you need on the bottom. The top, really you're just snipping off that little 45 right there and bunching. That's all there is to it. Um, again, you can do these, you can make this tag with just heavy, heavy cardstock. But if you've never tried these chipboard tags and you run across them in the craft store, they're inexpensive. I'd grab a package, they're like three bucks and you get oh, maybe eight to 10 tags. So they're definitely something fun to play with. So that was my substrate that I used. What I did was I found this beautiful loved this floral um, loved the colors just i loved the flowers loved everything about it so i printed these zinnias out um, as a full size piece um, which is on my printer this came out slightly smaller than eight and a half by 11. you can see i've got white edges didn't matter because i only need to cover this tag so i went ahead and i glued it down on one side and before I glued the backside on, let me show you this little tool. Like I said, I do a lot of tags and I don't like to have the hole covered up. Some people, it doesn't make any difference, especially if you're gonna tie something on the top, you can always glue it on, but it's just a pet peeve. I've, I've got it, if there's a hole on there, I've gotta make sure there's still a hole. So this is a handy little tool. It's called a rat tail file and you can pick them up for like three, four bucks. You can buy them in the hardware store. You can order them on Amazon. If you do tags, they're a must. What it does, this, let's see if I can get really close. Please excuse the horrible nails I have. I have no excuse. These are crafters hands. Um, this is a rough, little file so what you would do is you poke down into the center and it pokes right through the paper and you just I don't know if you can you can probably hear it you literally just kind of sand and what it does is it sands that hole smooth so you don't have some torn up edges in desperation sometimes I know people poke maybe the tip of their scissors in there and just kind of rough it out but this will give you a very cleanly finished off hole. 
So <laughs> this may seem like nonsense, but if you, if you want to go that extra step, I would suggest doing that. So this is the front and the back of the tag. What I did for all of these floral embellishments, I printed it out, the same image out again. I printed this one out as a, uh, I think it's a five by seven. Yes, it is. I did print it out as five by seven. Oops, I just hit my lights here. And what that did was it gave, gives me some smaller flowers that I can embellish with. So I've gone ahead and I have just fussy cut. I fussy cut as many of these out as I want. You can fussy cut out one or two if that's all you want to do. You can completely leave off that step, but you do lose the ability to create dimension on your tag. So I printed it out. I fussy cut the flowers out. And then what I did was I backed them with tiny little scraps of chipboard. Let me see if you can see that. Some of these have two layers. Some of them have three layers. Again, no right or wrong. The different, the, how do I clearly explain this? So that makes sense. The, the single layer of chipboard is going to appear lower where this flower has three layers of chipboard. When they're glued onto the tag, it will appear slightly higher and it will actually give you a shadow like you can see. Yes, you can see it in here. Um, it'll give you that shadow, which really helps your eye see the dimension. So I, I think that sounded like a whole lot of nonsense that was just complicating what this is. You simply cut it out, glue a little chipboard on the back for the dimension, and that's all there is to it. Um, I did add one additional piece. I just rubber stamped on some cardstock. This, it's, it's actually like a label. And I backed it with a single layer of chipboard. And I'm gonna put that single layer down before I put anything else down. So I am just gonna kinda eyeball this. I made it a little off center because I'm gonna make my B a little bit off center. And then I just start kind of building with these flowers. Um, I'm gonna, I'm going to glue them over the existing design. So they're not gonna match up. What I tried to do was just kind of fill, really just fill the tag up with a lot of floral. Um, I tried to leave as much of the original flowers uncovered because they're, they're beautiful. I don't want to cover them up, but I just wanted to add a little bit of dimension. That's why I'm adding this second layer on. And I do like when things kind of lay on top of others. So I'm gonna glue those down. And oh, this one last little guy, oh, I've got him up at the top. So this last little piece, I'm just gonna kind of stick up there and I'm gonna purposely, I'm purposely letting it hang off the edge of the tag. It's always nice, I'm gonna twist this one just a little bit so it does the same. It's always nice when you are able to kind of go off the edges of your page. It, it just brings a little bit of life to your project. So the base is done. It's got the printed, the, the rubber stamped label. It's got the layers of flowers. The next thing is the bee. And that bee is so cute. So again, I just printed the bee off on copy paper. I glued it to some chipboard. I fussy cut her out. And you'll see, I cut her antennas off. Don't tell anyone. Um, they were, they didn't show once I put the crown on and they were super, super thin. You could always use a little bit of black, maybe a little bit of black, heavy thread, crochet thread, little thin black twine. You could kind of add your own little antenna on. 
it's not going to bother me. My daughter, she studied entomology, and of course, the first thing she notices, hey, he has no antenna. Um, but that's okay with me. So I fussy cut the bee. This is what he, she, what she looks like. I glued a lot of layers of chipboard onto the back of her. And the reason she's got a lot of layers is I want her to stand up way above everything else. I really want her to have dimension. I also glued on this tiny little metal crown. Couldn't resist. So let's go ahead and glue her on. Got a big glob of glue on the top of my glue bottle. Okay, so I'm just gonna kind of, just got a little string. I'm just gonna kind of place her, I think right there. And I really do love when things have dimension. I, I don't know how well dimension shows on camera, but in real life, dimension is everything in a project. That just, I live for that. Okay, so yeah, I think you can see there's some dim shadow is what I'm trying to show you. Okay, and you can see the shadow. In real life, the shadow is, is much more, your eyes really see that much easier. So you're almost done with her. Um, the one thing I did decide I wanted, I wanted to add something on top of her. And I had a whole box of these enamel charms. They are metal and there's a hole on each end. So I just ran this real, real small velvet ribbon through. Let me see if I can get that to focus. And all I did was just kind of um, snip out the ends so it's got the little points. And I'm gonna stick some, put some glue on this. And I'm gonna stick it right on top of her. Well, she is right here. And I just, I love her. Get that where I want that. Okay, I think that's the spot. And I, I like these little velvet tails that are left. She just looks very elegant. I went ahead and on mine, I just added a tiny little, it, this was just a sticker and I really wanted it to be B-E-E, -E, be amazed, but I figured if I went ahead and wrote that second E on there, I'll probably screw it up. So I'm just gonna leave it that way, be amazed. I just finished the top with some ribbon. I just strung through and just tied it in half of a bow. And that is it. I, I love the color, I love the bee, and I love the crown. So pretty much I'm really, really happy with how these turned out. So I hope you'll give it a chance. I hope you enjoyed Tag Team Friday, and we'll see you again. Happy crafting.